What makes dogs fart smell so bad? Why dogs stick out their tongue so often? And can you learn your dog to respond to cough as it was their name? Answers to your questions in this video. Hi, it's Rajim from Rockadoc and welcome to second Rockadoc Q&A where I'm answering your question from Quora. Well, let's jump into the first question. Get, could you teach a dog to respond to cough as it was their name? Well, technically you can, because dogs don't know that the Charlie, Andy, Buddy, uh, it's, that it's their name. They, for them, it's just a sound that you use to bring their attention. That is why they turn their head towards you or they run to you when you say their name. When I was younger, we had a dog that knew his name, but he also recognized my dad's unique whistle. He would always run towards us when my dad whistled at him. So, but the, but the whistle was pretty unique. If you whistle some, somehow differently, he would not care at all. And the whistling actually worked better than calling his name. As I said, the whistles were kind of unique and most importantly, they were similar to each other. They were always the same. So I think it's the same thing with coughing. If your coughing will be always the same, then your dog can respond to it just as it, it, it is its name. Question number two, what makes my dog's fart smell so bad? Well, they smell bad because dogs eat a lot of protein and pr protein contains sulfur, which is chemical that makes, for example, old eggs smell terrible. The smell is also caused by bad diet. A lot of grain in your dog's food will make the dog's fart smell a little bit worse. So try and find the best quality dog food you can. It, it might make the problem a little bit less annoying. By the way, I'm pretty sure that the dog's fart smell bad for us, but for them, for dogs, it's symphony of scents. Question number three, why do dogs stick out their tongues so often? Well, sticking out their tongues and panting is dogs way how to cool down their bodies because dogs don't have the option of sweating so they use other ways how to cool down and sticking out their tongue is one of them. They breathe the cool air into their nose and breathe out the hot air through their mouth. And just like people, when we are stressed, we sweat a lot. And dogs, when they are stressed, they stick out their tongue and panting heavily, just like we do. Question number four, what is the best exercise for a little puppy? Well, I would say that any non-forced exercise is great. Let your puppy do what they want to do. If they want to run around you, then let them run around you. Throw them some toy, but don't force them to run for it. Don't, definitely don't force little puppies to go, to go jogging or biking with you. Even fast forced walks, long fast walks, would be a lot and too much for little eight weeks old puppy. For me the best exercise for little puppy is the one where it can socialize because it's not only good for their physical and mental health but it also teach them how to behave around other people and animals. And don't worry and let your puppy social exercise off leash. They will naturally follow you around because it's their instinct. When they are in the, in the nature they follow their mom naturally and because when they are with you, you are kind of their mom, so they will follow you naturally, don't worry about that. So for me the best exercise is non-forced off-leash run in a park with some other people. Question number five, what are great apartment dogs that I can take for a three mile run? And I think that Greyhound or Whippet is the great choice for you because inside they are total couch potatoes. They will sleep all day long in their comfy bed. So they are great apartment dogs. But outside running is their biggest passion and they will love to go jogging with you. It's something they were born for. And if you like bigger dogs, that I think the Greyhound is the best choice for you and you can make a good deed and save retired racing Greyhound. 
Another good choice, this time smaller one, would be Jack Russell Terrier. But they are way more active inside than Greyhound. Or they are more active outside than Greyhound and they are more active than any other breed probably. They are one of the most hyperactive dog out there. But since they are pretty small, they are good for apartment living and they will love to go running with you they will love to go playing fetch cycling scootering jogging hiking well you name it they will love any activity at any day at any hour they are really hyperactive dog breed question number six do you like dogs or cats and why well this channel is all about dogs so I think the answer is obvious that I'm more dog person but I think there are good things about both animals and now I will tell you why I like dogs more. The reason I like dogs more is that they are better and more active companions. They can do a lot of activities with you. Long walks, hiking, jogging, cycling, swimming etc etc. Dogs are also trainable, cats are not. If you have some experiences and the right breed, some breeds are more trainable than the others, you can achieve a lot with your dog. Just look at some talent shows and see what dogs are capable of. Third reason is that dogs are much more friendlier. If you leave your dog for an hour alone, he will welcome you just like you were gone for 10 years, right? I never seen this behavior with cats. Dogs are also much more versatile. They are not only great companions, they can be great guards, protectors, herders, assistants for blind people, emotional supporters, they can work with police and army, saving people in mountains, they can sniff drugs. They are so good at so many things that cats can't do. And the last fifth reason I can think of right now, there are more reasons for cats and for dogs obviously, but the last reason is uh, completely subjective, but it is that in my opinion dogs are much more better looking and cuter than cats. And the last question is, do you take your dog to dog park? Why or why not? Well. I don't have dog park in my city, but when we are on a trip where the dog park is, then I take them there. The biggest benefits of dog parks are socialization, obviously. It's the benefit that there are other dogs and other people and your dog can run with them, play with them and just meet them and learn how to behave around them. Socialization is the biggest and most important thing to learn your new puppy. It's much more important than training training itself. Another two reasons are physical exercise and stress relief. There is no better physical exercise than natural run with other dogs. And some dogs might be stressed out when they are left home alone for longer periods of time. Uh, for example, when you are at work. So after work you can take them to dog park, let them play with other dogs. It's great for their stress relief. Another great benefit of dog parks is training. Dog parks are a great place how to do the more advanced training with distraction. Training with distraction is much more harder than training in your garden or your home where your dog is focused 100% on you. You can teach your dog how to reliably calm in dog park when it's distracted by other animals and dogs. It's very important to teach your dog when it's distracted because especially the commands like come, you must know that your dog will reliably come to you even when they will see some dog or some bird or any animal. So the dog park is great place to teach them that. But there are some bad things about dog parks as well. The biggest and the main disadvantage of dog park is that you can run into aggressive dog. Well. They are not only good dogs in dog park, there are also some dogs that are not socialized or trained well. It really depends on the place you live in. I know that some people are telling me that there are only good dogs in their dog park, but there are some people telling me that they will never go to dog park with their dog because it's full of 
not behaved dogs. So this is the biggest danger that you will run toward into aggressive dog, especially if you, if you have a little puppy, it can cause a lot of troubles in the future when your dog, when your little puppy is attacked by some other dog. So be very careful uh, and choose carefully the dogs you will let your dog play with. If you have any other question, ask me on Quora or here in comments. I read all the comments. If you are new on this channel, consider subscribing, turn the notifications on and check our Facebook and Instagram links are in description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.